In this video, we perform a clean installation of the May 2019 update for Windows 10. Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flix. In this tutorial, we will download and install version 1903 of Windows 10, also known as the May 2019 update. In a previous video, we jumped the queue by joining the Windows Insider program, but with Microsoft having released an update to the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, that step is no longer necessary, and we can now straightforwardly download all we need to perform the update. Having already updated in that previous tutorial, you'll note that we are already running version 1903 on this machine, which we're purely using as a means to download the installer, which we will then use to perform a clean installation on another system. The steps in this tutorial can be performed on any version of Windows 10. We launch our default browser and head to the Windows 10 download page. Note that we're on the GB site here in Great Britain, but you can easily swap out the GB for US to access the American site. Irrespective of your choice, our definitive language selection will be made once we run the media creation tool. If it's our intention to update a single machine only, we have the means to do so by selecting this option, and indeed, more cautious users may also wish to simply wait their turn for the phased rollout via Windows Update to reach them. But, in this tutorial, our objective is to create installation media which we can deploy on multiple machines and archive for future use. We therefore select the option to create Windows 10 installation media and the small tool downloads. Once downloaded, we click to open a menu, selecting the option to show in folder. We run the media creation tool and confirm to user account control that this was a deliberate action. At startup, and at various times during the process, there is a brief pause as the media creation tool performs its work. We are presented with the relevant notices and license terms, and as ever, our agreement is a prerequisite to proceed. After a further phase of getting a few things ready, we are offered the default option to update a single PC only. As this isn't our objective, we opt instead to create installation media. We proceed to language edition and architecture selection, unticking use recommended options for maximum flexibility. At the language selection screen, we can opt for British English, US English, or any other language of our choosing. We can change our architecture options, and whilst 32-bit processors are becoming increasingly outdated, and 64-bit machines the norm, we will still typically select the option for both, creating an installer applicable in the widest variety of scenarios, at the cost of slightly larger file size and download speed. We progress to the media selection screen, and we select the ISO file option. This again affords us maximum flexibility, allowing us to archive the file for future use, burn to disk, or use as the basis for a virtual machine. We cover ISO file creation more in part 1 of our Ditch the Disk series, and we create virtual machines for Windows, Mac, Android and Linux in our Virtual Box series. With our option confirmed, the Save As dialog appears. We change the save location to our Downloads folder, although this choice is entirely arbitrary. We assign a descriptive name to the file to distinguish it from other similar ISO files in our archives. And after another spell of getting a few things ready, the download phase commences. We can take a break at this stage, as the download is sizeable and takes a little time. Once the download completes, it verifies and the media is created. We are presented with options for burning, which we don't pursue, heading instead to our downloads folder, where we see the output of the process, a single downloaded ISO file containing a full version of the Windows installer, ready to deploy on any machine. With our ISO file created, we now have a number of deployment options. We can burn the ISO to DVD, and set the machine's BIOS to boot from disk. Alternatively, we can write the ISO to a USB drive, typically using a utility to make that drive bootable, before again configuring BIOS to boot from the USB. Finally, we can use the ISO file as the basis of a virtual machine, by attaching the ISO as a virtual optical disk. Before embarking on any clean installation, which will completely erase the receiving hard drive, we highly recommend following the steps in the third part of our Installing Windows tutorial series, which offers a guided tour of preparatory steps in advance of a clean installation, and our backup series, which considers both full system imaging and selective file and folder backup. We now insert our installation media and power on the machine. With the revised boot sequence confirmed, our system boots from the installation media rather than the primary hard drive, triggering the installation process. 
This process varies only slightly from that discussed in considerable detail in part 4 of our installing Windows tutorial series, and we therefore largely summarise installation here. Suffice to say that, if you've performed a clean installation of Windows in any form, this will pose no difficulties for you. The Windows logo is shown, and yields to the first screen of the installation process, at which we can make the appropriate language, time and keyboard selections before clicking next. At the next screen we have the option to install now, and we are advised that setup is underway. We are then given the opportunity to enter our 25 character product key, which is typically located on a sticker attached to the PC, or on a keycard within retail packaging, or in documentation accompanying a retail purchase. Note that we can skip the code entry screen at this stage, but we will ultimately be required to activate the product. Nevertheless, We'll click I don't have a product key, purely to illustrate that the installer we have created has the capability to install the Home, Pro and other versions of Windows 10, and the entry of a product key at the previous screen ties the installation to a specific version. Of course, we can only install the version for which we hold a valid license, and cannot, for example, upgrade to a version without that license. So we need to ensure that the version selected matches the license we hold, and in this instance, we select the Pro Edition. Acceptance of the license terms is mandatory, and we click to indicate our agreement. We are now offered the choice between upgrade and custom installations, and in the case of a clean installation, we must accept the custom version as an upgrade is not applicable. At the next screen, we are fortunate that there is a single blank drive upon which we can perform the installation, and we can simply click next to proceed. However, your installation may be complicated by additional drives, and you should carefully check your installation drive using total capacity and free space as a reference. We can now take a short break as installation files are copied, then readied for installation. Features and updates are installed, after which the installation phase is concluded, and a restart is required to continue. Don't mistake the next screen for an instruction. In the previous phase of the installation, we copied the installer files from the installation disk to the primary hard drive. We therefore now need to boot from that primary hard drive, as booting from disk again would loop us back to the start of the process. We therefore simply wait, and the process resumes. The next phase of the installation is frequently punctuated by just a moment requests, and commences with region settings. We select our primary keyboard layout, and as we only use one type of keyboard layout, we decline the option to add a second. We pause briefly when advised that the installer has some important setting up to do. Now we make a choice between personal and organisational use, and as we assume that the overwhelming majority of you are home users, we will follow this path. Note that many of the screens which follow will offer a binary choice, and we are required to confirm our choice before clicking next. We now have three sign-in options, and we cover these more comprehensively in part 4 of our Windows installation tutorial series. We choose to sign in with our existing Microsoft account, entering our email address and password before advancing to the PIN creation screen. The PIN created can be used in place of a password at the login screen, used at the beginning of every Windows session. Alternatively, you may wish to follow our NetPL Wiz tutorial in order to bypass login entirely. We enter a 4 digit PIN, although note that this can be increased to up to 8 characters, and non-numeric characters can be included. We are then required to enter the PIN a second time by way of confirmation. The next series of options strike a balance between privacy and convenience. We certainly won't offer advice as to correct selections to make here, and it's a matter for your own judgement as to whether the sacrifice of personal data is worth the rewards offered. We start by accepting a unified activity history across devices. We don't have any objections to linking to iPhone and Android on privacy grounds, but rather we've typically handled these tasks using third party apps, and we therefore decline. We'd love to hear your views if you do use this feature regularly. We always accept OneDrive activation, as cloud storage options are always useful, even though OneDrive isn't necessarily our online storage provider of choice. Whilst it's incredibly rare for us to use Cortana, we also enable it on a just-in-case basis. We also opt to make use of speech recognition, which again is hardware dependent, naturally requiring a microphone. We opt to enable location data, and enable Find My Device. Although we are obligated to send some diagnostic data to Microsoft, we move away from the default level of full, preferring instead to provide minimum diagnostic disclosure. We likewise move away from the default inking and typing option, changing this to no in favour of privacy. We accept tailored experiences. 
Whilst we would prefer no advertising of any kind, if we must endure it, we would rather it was relevant. We adopt a similar philosophy when accepting the advertising ID. We can take a short break as the final aspects of setup are completed. As a final tease, we're told that we are almost there and eventually we glimpse a somewhat obscured desktop. We'll deal with the Microsoft account problem at a later date. We note that an initial issue with the display driver is detected, but given a few moments connected to the internet, this will be resolved automatically. With the display issue resolved, we can now view and clear the welcome page. With that, we see the version 1903 desktop unobscured for the first time. Running Winver confirms that we are now using the May 2019 update. For a walkthrough of first steps to be taken immediately following installation, check out part 5 of our Windows installation tutorial series. Also, as you are now running version 1903, you will want to check out our tutorials on features new to this version. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFix Flix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFixFlix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.